as an update on where we're at with the Chamber's strategic plan. We actually have a strategic plan that we created in 2015 over spans a three year period. And we did review this at the annual meeting that we had where we looked at our board members back in June at the Broadway Rose. There weren't a lot of people there, so I thought this would be a good chance to give you guys kind of an overview of what goals we have that are driving the Chamber forward for you. So. Without further ado, um, the Chamber has some major objectives. Most Chambers have major objectives, and we share those. So one of those is to create a strong local economy. So we've kind of defined that as creating a vibrant entrepreneurial environment within Tigard, and making sure we've got programs, partnerships, alliances that help us do that, that retain current business, and attracts and sustains and launches new business. So the strategies behind that. So you're going to see kind of a report card of how did we do. So this is looking at this last calendar year of 2016. So how did we do against our strategies that we had? So one was to create the capability for members to post jobs to the website. Check mark on that. I know some of you have used that, so this is a reminder to go ahead and use that. All you have to do is go in and log in through your member account. You can post the job. You can set a start and an end date. If you need to refresh it, you need to get in there before it expires, and then you can extend the end date. Otherwise, you have to recreate it. So that's a, a positive thing that we did. Another was to take positions for and against uh, measures legislatively that are be either benefiting or impacting business. So we did a check mark for that because we were very active that way this year. Uh, continue our board membership contract work in partnership with the Tiger Downtown Alliance. So the Downtown Alliance is focused on revitalization, the downtown core. We, as a chamber, are a downtown business. We're also a contractor for the TDA. So those downtown events that you see, Jessica and I are the gerbils on the wheel that do the event management in the background, and that's a billable service <laughs> to the Tiger Downtown Alliance. So, so we are working and continuing that partnership. And then another goal under this, creating a strong local economy, was to launch Leadership Tiger. So that's a community leadership program, and we successfully achieved that. Our original goal uh, was to have 10 participants, and we actually ended up with 18, so we're very happy about the inaugural class that we had. Uh, another key uh, objective for Chambers is to provide networking and business exposure, so that's one of the things we do here every week. And we really <coughs> want to be that go-to organization within Tiger um, for businesses to network, to get exposure, and we want to make sure that we've got that right mix of programs, networking events, and marketing tools that are going to match the diversity we have within our membership. So one of the things we really try to work on is staying relevant. So you'll see us do things like refresh the website. So there's a picture of a new website down there. So we, uh, with working actually, Ed One did all this work for us. But we provided creative feedback on it, but we now have a very mobile-friendly website. So if you hit it with your smartphone, you hit it with your tablet, or you hit it with your laptop, it's going to render itself the way it needs to. So that makes it a lot easier for members to access it, as well as people that are interested in the chamber or community members that are looking for community information. So we had some strategies under this whole networking and business exposure. We, one of our goals is to grow membership over a three-year period from 300 members to 400. So that first year should be to get us to 330. We did not achieve that goal. In fact, we lost a little bit of ground. We had 51 members that joined in the calendar year of 2016, and we lost 59. So that is an area that we really need to focus on. It's an area for growth. Everybody benefits when we add more members to the chamber. We wanted to update and refresh events. We did that. You saw Get Connected, the after hours kind of get relaunched in a new format. And we are going to continue that moving forward with probably yet another tweak to that. And um, what else do we do with our events? Uh, we added back, the ambassadors decided to add back a second networking. So you will see that in our fiscal year, you will see a second networking added back in. So because we had kind of contracted down to one a year, then we decided to add back to two a year. So that's an, another change that we made on our events. And then another uh, thing that we wanted to really focus on was growing the Tiger Young Professionals. And that has actually been kind of a struggle for us because we're not exactly sure why, but part of it, it's ran for three years with an all-volunteer committee. And they did a great job, Ethan did a great job of wherever he is, of launching that thing off and gathering like-minded individuals, which included Megan and other <coughs> team members, to make that happen. It's ran, I think we're actually probably now in our fourth year, 
but you know, people's lives change and all that kind of stuff. So we decided there was enough traction and enough commitment from the organization that we should transition that to being staff led. So Jessica's now the chair of Tiger Gun Professionals. And so it's going to be reformatted moving into 2017 and there'll actually be two events each month. There'll be an after hours and there'll be an educational um, AM. We're not going to call it breakfast because we're not serving breakfast. And the um, after hours, we decided to put an age band on it because a lot of people that come visit our young professionals expect to see people that are biologically young at those. So there's an age band of 21 to 45 on the after hours, but the educational component's really going to be a, uh, a Tiger Chamber program that is going to be presented by the Tiger Young Professionals and it's called Invest in You. And you probably saw something come out on social media about that yesterday. So. And now he's laughing about my biological age. <laughs> I don't know how else to explain it, because in my so mind, I'm 30, are in my mind, I'm 38. <laughs> so, what? He's like, internally. Okay, so another goal for us as a chamber, another core objective, is promoting the community. So in that, what we mean by that is we want to promote Tiger as kind of a unique and eclectic destination for business, community, and culture. Because my view, particularly of this downtown core, is it's pretty eclectic. And if you look at kind of the surrounding community and the neighborhoods, there's 14 kind of defined neighborhoods, at least the way the city's defined their map. And those all have different characteristics. There's some, you know, you got some areas where you have really old homes, you got areas where you have new homes, you have areas where you have apartments. And so, you know, Tiger's a pretty interesting <coughs> mix of people, businesses, etc. So under this promoting community, one is to grow the Tiger Farmers Market. And we did that, if we compare that to our 2015, we had more vendors, our gross revenue was up, we improved the bottom line of the farmer's market, the social media presence was dynamically expanded, thanks to Jessica's efforts, and a really cool thing is we saw an increase in the number of customers that benefit from our matching program for the uh, um, SNAP and Oregon Trail cards, so that's huge, that really benefits a portion of our community. One, another goal was we wanted to increase scholarships. We'd like to be able to give more at Shining Stars back to high school seniors. Right now we give about $3,000 a year. I'd love to see that get bigger, like double that, because that's kind of been where we've been at ever since I've been here, the last seven years. Didn't achieve anything on our donations are flat, but I'm looking at uh, um, having an opportunity for somebody to maybe do that as a sponsorship as part of Shining Stars and be able to give at a larger <coughs> level and have maybe that scholarship named after them. Um, we decided we want to make sure we continue the visitor center and the community guide, so that is something that we continue to work on. This, that's a picture of the 2016 community guide. And the other thing we did is you saw we added a new, I would call it a kiosk or whatever, to really utilize the space downstairs. So there's more places to distribute visitor information. There's also more spaces for you guys to put your business cards. And we get two to three hundred people a day through this building. And we see business cards like move out of there. So you need to be taking, there's lots of space down there, you need to be taking advantage of that. The other thing we do is we go through that and we harvest cards because we find people who are not members sticking their cards in there. So, and we use that as an opportunity to reach out, you know, are you interested in the chamber, et cetera. And then the new thing we added as well with that big built-in that we put in there is the ability to advertise in that hallway. So you think there's a couple, 300 people a day going through there. And I can tell you, there's at least two to three hundred flushes a day. So I know people are going past that thing, because I can hear the toilet in my office, okay? And they wonder, because they have to stay on the line, and so you can advertise in that space for a year. So that's a new thing that we've added. It's a 9 by 12 space, and we've got four members who have taken advantage of that so far. So that's something new. And then continue to promote Downtown Tiger's uniqueness, which I kind of already talked about in the work that we do with the Tiger Downtown Alliance. Um, you might not know, we are the behind the scenes administrators of the Downtown Tiger Facebook page, their Twitter account, and Instagram. So, and we've been doing that for four or five years when we were contracted previously with the city. So we are that mouthpiece, and then as the chamber and the farmer's market, we turn around and we repeat all of that. And then we do the same thing for the benefit of the chamber and the farmer's market. So that's one of the nice things that we can be sharing that information across multiple platforms. So that's kind of what we're doing on the promoting community side. And I would say we've got green, green check marks and everything with the exception of those scholarship contributions. Another big area that we're growing in is representing 
your interests at a legislative level when it comes to things that are either really great for business or not so great for business. So our strategies for 2016, one was we wanted to develop our own legislative agenda versus just copy what the state chamber was doing because there was a couple things in there that we weren't sure we were really in agreement with at a board level. And we wanted to put our own stamp on it and make it relevant to our local community and also line it up with kind of what the city was doing. So we also share our legislative agenda with the city and they share it there with us. So I give us a big green SD school bond measure and you saw us come out in support of the light rail initiative. So I give us a, a green on that one. Another goal has been to educate you as members and encourage you to participate in contacting your legislators and testifying. Kind of gave us yellow on that. We started to see more traction with members. We saw a lot of you join the coalition for No on 97. We had a handful of members that actually wrote emails to the legislators on some key issues. But we'd really like to get to where we have 10 or 20 businesses that are kind of passionate about this. They're willing to write a legislator. It might even be your own, because one of the things that Oregon State Chamber does for us is they say, these are the key ones on this issue, and you guys just need to communicate with them, regardless of whether or not they're in your district. So that's an area for growth for us for 2017, so I give that a yellow. Um, enhancing our working relationships with city staff and electeds, I would give us a green on that. We continue to have a really good working relationship with the city, with the mayor, with the city manager. Um, I see them on a very frequent basis. And then another goal is we'd really like to grow our government affairs committee, because we want it to be representative of you. And we've kind of struggled with that. Not everybody's interested in politics, um, I get that but we need some people that are kind of passion, impassioned about that. So I would give this a yellow because we've kind of been pretty stagnant as a committee. And I'd like to see more representation across kind of what our business diversity looks like. And then lastly, a goal was to, this isn't like a key goal of the chamber share, but for us it's important, and I decided to give, make it a separate goal, is to support relevant business education. So providing you as members opportunities to be learning things that you can turn around and apply in your business, benefit your business from, um, share with others, and just develop your skills. So one of the things that we've had access to, but we have not done a good job of promoting lately, we did a good job several years ago, is there's a program through American Family Insurance, it's an online business accelerator, it's free. They've got archived <laughs> webinars, they have things broken down topically, whether you want to focus on marketing, sales, finance, operations, et cetera. So I would give us a big red mark on that because we didn't, we haven't pushed that to you guys and I think that since it's a free tool and you can do it at midnight if that's when you do your best learning or whatever. Um, really want to grow our participation in the Breakfast of Champions, which is now going to be called Invest in You. And um, so I gave that a yellow. And then another goal was to grow our blog content because, and try to have useful business content for you. And in 2014, we only had nine business blog articles. In 2015, we had 45. So the goal is we probably to try to get to one a week. And then this last year, we had 33, so we slid that a little bit. But significant improvement over 2014. And then lastly, it was to launch the leadership program, which we did. So that's kind of our report card for 2016. Yay, thank, thank you. you. So the one question I have, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let you answer it. Oh, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe when you do your announcements, you, you might be able to give me a short answer. Okay. Uh, so we have a couple, couple of red X's that I noticed. Well, I think that one of them though is how can us as members help with that first one of growing from that 290 back up to that 330. So um, I guess those are just questions, a question that I want to put out to all of you guys as well, but maybe just kind of hear about what you have to say in your announcements. Okay, cool. Cool. Uh, okay, so winner, winner, chicken dinner. 